with some of the larger uh, size chickpeas up about 7%. I think we'll see small size up about 40% this year as we put more acres into Montana and North Dakota. Yellow pea acres will increase as you'll see a switch from green to yellow acres and you'll see North Dakota uh, return as a growing area for yellow peas. Green pea acres will increase this year, and I, but I put a but on it. The PNW acres, the higher quality uh, product that we typically have, will decrease this year as we're seeing people go towards chickpeas in that region. The Montana acres will hold steady to slightly lower as we see people switch from yellow to green peas. And North Dakota will increase, uh, but will have generally a lower quality of, of the twos and threes. Lentil acres will increase. Montana acres will be higher with more reds and more estens being grown this year as farmers are frustrated with their ability to market richlies and they're looking for different uh, varieties to grow. And you'll see less richly grown in the United States this year. North Dakota will increase and that's primarily just due to the better weather that they have. So that's all I have and I thank you. Thank you Mr. Jeff. I will now request Mr. Rob Bradley to make a presentation in Australia. Thank you. Thank you and good, uh, good afternoon. I think it is by now. Um, my presentation is mainly focused around uh, Desi chickpeas because uh, I think that's one commodity in Australia where uh, we can actually, uh, I think, uh, influence uh, global markets. While production itself is not sort of uh, uh, huge by Canadian and certainly uh, European standards, um, we do represent, I think, uh, something like 80% of the world trade. Um, so uh, we do have an influence on world markets. I will touch on, uh, on Dun Peas a little bit uh, towards the end of the uh, uh, presentation. But if I can just start by making a few comments just generally in terms of the pulses, I guess, in Australia. Again, firstly, uh, uh, pulses have uh, certainly found them, uh, a position uh, within the farmers' uh, cropping uh, as uh, a substantial uh, benefit. Um, there's certainly very good uh, rotation benefits being, uh, being achieved by farmers and for that reason we're going to see certainly stable production moving forward. Whether we increase production uh, of pulses is very much uh, linked to global prices and comparisons to, uh, uh, to feed grains and to cereal grains. Um, unlike some other parts of the world, in Australia we, we have no subsidy systems, uh, we have no uh, import duties, we have no export duties. Uh, so the markets are very much left to themselves uh, and farmers very much look at uh, forward projections on prices and the relativities of those as to what they plant. So with that, I'll go forward. If someone can tell me which button to push to, to go forward. <laughs> Is it? Just enter. Sorry, which one are we going to enter, go for? Enter. Just enter. Okay. Just. Okay. Um, looking at uh, this is Desi chickpeas, as I said. Uh, looking at the Australian supply side, and uh, I guess being a trader by uh, by nature, uh, I'll get down to the very specifics of the supply demand on chickpeas in Australia. Um, this year will carry in very little. Um, in the way of uh, uh, carry-in. I mean, we had reduced production in 2010-11, uh, primarily caused by weather problems. Um, as most people know, we've been in a La Nina uh, cycle. Uh, that has meant that our part of the world has been seeing excessive rain, um, extreme flooding, uh, particularly in the northern parts of Australia where chickpeas are grown. Uh, planted area in Australia in 2011-12 was down by about 50%. Uh, over the previous, uh, previous season. Um, there was a lack of uh, suitable planting seed because of the weather problems of the previous year uh, and a lack of grower confidence, um, mainly due to disease issues uh, created by the extreme weather. Uh, they were the two major reasons for the redu reduction in price. Also, the relative price of chickpeas 
at the planting time did not look terribly favourable uh, to that of uh, cereals, which was coming off the problems in Northern Hemisphere. Um, season, seasonal conditions throughout this year uh, have been very favourable, uh, meaning uh, we've had lo low disease problems and, and certainly slightly above average yields. Early harvest quality was very good, uh, but heavy rain once again, uh, still with the La Nina influence, uh, meant that the last 30% of the harvest, mainly in New South Wales, uh, was of poor quality. Uh, it meant that 5 to 10% 5 to 10 of the crop was abandoned uh, and, and the balance of that New South Wales 30% had a varying degree of uh, quality issues. Uh, quality problems this year have ranged from slightly darker outer shells uh, through very dark in colour and damaged, uh, damage to the pea itself. Um, I think it's worth noting that the GDA export standards under which most chickpeas from Australia are traded allows for some discoloration of the outer shell. Uh, while it's a subjective uh, an analysis, it allows for product to be of light or medium brown in colour. So um, I think it's important because I think there's uh, certainly some mis misapprehension on that. This allows for product with minor rain damage to be received and classified as number one grade. The main focus of the standard is to ensure that the inner pea is sound and of good yellow golden appearance. Uh, so standards are therefore really aimed at uh, mainly the milling market, uh, not the whole eating markets uh, in Bangladesh and so forth, where outer shell appearance is more critical. On the demand side, domestic milling uh, requirements in Australia, while small, uh, are growing gradually. Um, I guess on the whole, our costs of, uh, of uh, milling are much higher than in other parts of the world. Uh, grower attention for seed requirements will be higher. Uh, as expectations for the 2012-13 plantings will increase uh, by about 20%. It's, uh, it's a little early to, ma to be making too many projections on next year's plantings. Uh, we won't plant until April, May. Um, but uh, I think at this stage, uh, the fact that we've had uh, high uh, rainfall throughout the summer months means that we've got very good sub uh, subsoil moisture. Um, and I think that's encouraging uh, for the planting of particularly chickpeas. One of the things that I would say once again is, uh, as other speakers have said, is that the, the, the final plantings of peas will very much depend on the relative pricing to other commodities um, and also other pulses. Uh, there's a lot of faba beans uh, also grown in the areas where uh, chickpeas are grown, desi chickpeas are grown, and um, at the moment the prices of those are very, very high uh, and demand is very strong coming out of, uh, out of uh, the Middle East. Uh, so we could see uh, some of that uh, additional production go to favour beans. Export demand continues to grow at a steady pace. Uh, the UAE is now a big market for Australian chickpeas, where product is processed for domestic consumption and re-exported to the Gulf countries, I think at the expense of India, uh, since the, uh, the banning of exports. Uh, Bangladesh demand seems to be about unchanged, although like many countries, um, they appear to be struggling with uh, uh, US dollars in terms of financing. Uh, to buy the product. Uh, for this reason, we expect demand from Bangladesh to be very, at a very low level, uh, or at the lower end, I should say, of the normal range this year. However, uh, we'll be uh, earlier given that uh, Ramadan is much earlier this year. And I think that's one of the interesting uh, things this year is that um, uh, some of the uh, uh, competing um, export countries, uh, like uh, North, Af North Africa and so forth, uh, their crop uh, will probably not uh, find its way into uh, the subcontinent markets before Ramadan this year, which is in July. Uh, Pakistan has been a big importer in the last season, uh, mainly of our, our water-damaged uh, defective peas, and with reports of local production being cut by at least 50%, our expectation is demand will uh, continue at a solid pace through 2012. They'll once again take firstly our defectives, but uh, only a small volume of this uh, was produced this season, uh, and with very little carryover, uh, we think they will eventually start buying number ones. And in fact, in the last week or two, they have been doing that. Uh, India has traditionally been, the, uh, uh, been a major importer, uh, and they have purchased significant tonnes in that period, November, December, January, just prior to their, old, uh, their new crop uh, um, harvest of their own. I think the most significant difference this year uh, has been that uh, in, compared to last year, uh, the peas were actually shipped. Uh, last year, uh, in 2010, there was probably 150,000 tonne of peas sold, but uh, only a very small 
proportion of that was, uh, was actually shipped. Most was diverted uh, to other countries like Pakistan and Bangladesh. So looking at the supply demand, we'll try, try to get down to some, uh, some real tin tacks. Uh, the carry-in was very small, uh, 30,000 tonnes, um, you know, virtually uh, nothing. Uh, production this year was around 360. At one point it looked like it might be closer to 400, uh, but with the rains on the late, uh, the late crop, uh, that uh, certainly cut uh, production back. So a total supply of around 390,000 tonnes. Domestic use is relatively small in Australia. Um, it's about uh, 25,000 for milling purposes. Uh, this year we expect about 35,000 to be retained for seeding purposes, uh, given the uh, expected increased planting. Uh, exports to date, um, we've seen it in our view, we believe India has taken around 110,000. This is up until the end of January. Uh, Pakistan around 25, Bangladesh 25, the UAE 15 and other destinations around five, leaving around 180,000 tonnes uh, of total, uh, total export demand. This leaves uh, remaining supply of around 150,000 tonnes, um, not very large. Um, and when you look at uh, between now and new crop, uh, which is on November 1, uh, what further demand we should see. Um, you look at Bangladesh, uh, would normally buy between 120 and 150,000 tonnes of chickpeas from Australia, having only taken 25, as we saw from the slide before. On the low side, we're saying 100,000 tonnes still to go. Uh, Pakistan, well, it's a, it's a very difficult uh, uh, situation to predict, but we think they'll take another 70. And the UAE, um, about another 50. Uh, India, well, we don't know. I guess it depends very much on what, their, uh, what the local crop uh, is, uh, is going to look like. Um, but even without India, um, if you do the numbers, we had 150,000 left to sell, and there's 220,000 there. So yeah, we're in deficit. Uh, we'll have uh, uh, zero carry out of peas this year. Uh, and if, uh, if for some reason in the second half of the year, India is looking to, uh, to import more desi chickpeas, uh, they won't be there, simply as that. <laughs> um, if I can just touch on uh, dun peas very quickly, um, yeah, I, unlike the desi chickpeas where we play a major role, I think, in the pricing uh, globally, uh, dun peas, we're more of a price taker, obviously in relation to uh, the bigger yellow pea uh, supplies in North America and in Europe. Um, this year production will be around uh, 300,000 tonnes. It's been that way for probably the last two or three years. Um, while it's uh, very much key in the rotations in the areas where they produced, um, it's not growing because uh, simply compared to uh, the price of uh, cereals and other products, uh, canola, etc., it's very low in price uh, and therefore uh, the minimum quantity, if you like, uh, required for rotations is grown. Domestic demand is about 120 to 150,000 tonnes, uh, depending on the season and stock feed demand and so forth. So we have about 150,000 tonnes to export. Uh, normally that would come to, uh, if you like, uh, uh, particularly South India, Chitty Karin, and uh, into uh, Calcutta, into Sri Lanka and these places uh, that prefer uh, to use uh, dun peas, the more bitter tasting pea. Um, I think, and that's been the case probably for the last two or three years, uh, I think the, watch, the thing to watch this year is that at the moment I would put done P values at about 420 to 430 uh, CFR into, uh, into India. Uh, so they, uh, uh, while it might be very high in comparison to local prices here at the moment, it's very competitive with yellow peas uh, out of uh, Canada and out of France, etc. So, I mean, we may just see uh, done peas uh, move into other markets this year, like uh, Bangladesh and perhaps Pakistan, uh, compared to previous years. So uh, that concludes my presentation. Um, I hope, uh, I hope uh, it uh, was uh, um, factual for you. And uh, I would like to thank the organisers and Pravin in particular for inviting me to speak. And I'd be happy to take any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Breeley, for that very informative presentation from Australia. I would now request Mr. Mies Van Dongen to make his presentation. Thank you. 
Hour. Okay, thank you. So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I want to thank uh, the President, Mr. Pravin Dongre, who allows me to speak here today and to present the figures of Ukraine, France, and Russia. Uh, as I'm the last speaker today before the panel discussion, I will be very fast and hurry up to catch up a little bit of the lost time we had this morning. So we have just a couple of uh, slides to present you with uh, bar graphs and not so much figures and some explanations. First of all, we go to the area in Russia, uh, France and the Ukraine. The second presentation will be the yield per country and, per, per, uh, and the production per country, chickpeas in Russia, the exports, and the summary of the total. So if we go to the exports, the red is Russia, yellow is for the Ukraine, and the blue one is for France. You see that France is a little bit stable. It's going from 112,000 hectares up to 230 because of the subsidy, which we talk on later on. We went down in 2011, 2011 and we will go down again in 2012 because of we don't get the subsidy anymore. We had very low yields in France last year because of the dry weather, just because, before the flowering of the, uh, the peas. Instead of having 4.7 tons per hectare, we had only 3.7. So there was a big loss. Farmers are disappointed. Beet prices are, are good, so they say we will, so we will plant less, less peas. Ukraine is stable. We had some losses last year because of the weather in acreage. And if you look at, the, uh, at Russia, Russia